Good morning, Park Church. My name is Pastor Nicole, and we hope that you have had a great Christmas and a happy new year. Um, we want to thank you all for joining us this morning from your couch and um, coming and worshiping the Lord with us. We're excited to share the word of the Lord um, that we really believe that the Lord has spoken to Andrew and I for this next year. So um, you can look forward to that a little bit later. Um, we are on day three of our time of fasting and prayer, not only as a church, but with our whole denomination globally. And we believe that the Lord has great things in store for not only this church, but for his church, the global church, as we petition him in prayer and in fasting, saying, Lord, I give all these other things over to you because you are more important to me than all those other things. Would you increase in my life? Would my hunger increase for you? Would, my, would you bring breakthrough and freedom in our in our lives. Um, Isaiah 58, 6 says, Is this not the kind of fast I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? When we begin to seek Jesus through fasting and prayer, not only do we get direction from him, clarity from him, and increased hunger for him, but we also have freedom in our lives. And um, we are in a season in our world that we need freedom more than ever before. We need hope in Jesus. We need an increased sense of his presence and actual freedom taking place in our lives and in the, our cities and on our world. And so when we join together in fasting and prayer, um, we believe that these things begin to take place um, in the church. And so we uh, want to encourage you that whatever the Lord has put in your heart, that you would continue to press into him and to seek his face, to stay true to the things that he's asked you to lay aside for a short season, because the blessing that he wants to give to you on the back end of laying those things down will be some substantial for this year for um, for you, for our church and our city, um, and we believe God wants to bless you. So go ahead, and um, if you have not uh, joined us yet in this fast, it is not too late. We want to encourage you to ask the Lord how he would have you fast and to jump on in and join in with us, um, not just abstaining from things and holding back from things, but really leaning into him, pressing into his presence. You can go ahead and use our 21-day prayer guide to, to do that. You can find that on Park Weekly. Um, there is a link to download, and there is a, um, a scripture reading and prayer points for each day, and we want to encourage you to engage that and use that um, during this time. Um, and we look forward to all the fruit that will come from this season. Uh, we will conclude our time uh, together on the 21st, Lord willing. We will be gathering to worship and pray at that time, and um, really believing that the Lord wants to, to conclude our time of fasting and prayer with practical breakthrough in your life, freedom in your life, and um, that we would join together to do that. Um, a few other things for you um, as we head into these next few weeks for current updates on what we are doing for Park Church, whether we'll be here or home, uh, meaning online or in the church, um, go ahead and just keep checking in at Park Weekly. Everything will be posted there weekly to update you on what will be happening for the next few weeks. So as we kind of readjust into um, getting back into a normal rhythm of meeting, um, go ahead and check there. And if you have any questions, you can always email us. Um, a few other things as we conclude uh, our announcements. Um, we believe in the power of prayer, and if you want us to partner with, with you in prayer in any way, go ahead and go to our website, and you can click on prayer requests and type in your prayer requests there. Um, and lastly, we believe that the Lord has asked us to um, trust him with our tithes and our offerings and to give to him a tenth of our income as a means of saying, I trust you, Jesus. Everything that you've given to me belongs to you, and I give it freely back to you for your purposes, for your kingdom. Um, so go ahead. If you are looking to give today, you can go to parkchurchsd.org. Um, click on the giving link and go ahead and give there. Um, we pray that you have had a blessed day. Um, we look forward to um, continuing our time together this morning. Um, we miss you. We love you. And we're going to go ahead and kick it over to Ryan Hall and go into a time of worship. We've come to join the song. Song long before our life a voice along heaven and earth a light we've seen your faithful hand your mercy without end a king who led 
a God who sacrifices to be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations. You are worthy, Lord, of all. Unto you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice to death. Singing worthy, Lord, all. And all through this life we lead, and to eternity, our endless praise. Welcome to Park Church. My name is Pastor Andrew, and I'm so excited to bring the word today to us as a congregation. Gosh, Nicole and I are so thankful for everybody's generosity and love and friendly phone calls, text messages, just just reaching out to us, making sure that we're okay during this last two weeks as we've been quarantining. We're doing great. We're uh, just getting over some of the, the tiredness that comes with with all this, but we're doing good, so I don't want you guys to be too worried about us. So, <clears throat> into the word of the year. So this is the first Sunday of 2021, and usually 
us, like most congregations, we come with a word of the year. And this has been such a good practice. It just kind of help, helps focus us in this time. And, and kind of as we meditate and pray and go, Lord, what are you doing in us and through us as a community? And what came on Nicole in my heart is we've spent the last couple months really thinking about this. And we, we've come to the, the, the phrase, following Jesus. Now, the instability of 2020 has just been, it just hasn't been predictable. Um, it's been funny because having a lot of friends who have churches, everybody, you know, 2020, the word of that year was clear vision. And, you know, I like to always say, you know, you didn't see that coming. And it's just, we just, we couldn't have anticipated uh, a year like 2020. And as we're going into 2021, I want to just, what's on my heart is holding on to something that is immovable. And that's following Jesus. So as we break into the next four weeks, we're going to do a series on following Jesus and what that means for us at Park Church. So if everybody has their Bible, please turn to John 8, 12, and we'll begin right there. <clears throat> John 8, 12 says this. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now that's an amazing statement. But what's even more amazing, and this is what's so, Jesus is just a master. I mean, that statement alone is comforting. You know, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now that's just, I, I don't want to walk in darkness. I feel like I have been walking in darkness this last year, but I don't want to. And right here we see Jesus saying that if we follow him, we don't have to walk in darkness. But what makes Jesus so masterful is the context in which he said this. He, he, he is such a brilliant communicator. So imagine this with me. Let's set the stage. So Jesus is sitting here. He's at the, he, uh, he's at the um, Feast of Tabernacles. And, and he's sitting here with his disciples. And, 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 and it's the last day, as we read in chapter 7, which is the last couple days of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, at the last couple days of, I think it's the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, they have this festival, this illumination of the temple ceremony. Now, what that is, is I believe it's in the court, in the court of women in, in the... In, 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 at the temple, they take four menorahs that are roughly, I believe, 74, 75 feet high, and they stick it right in the middle of this, and then they light it. And it's a symbol, it's a reminder to the people of Israel of how God led them through the desert after he delivered them from Egypt. So at this moment, of, uh, uh, during this feast, as they approach this, this illumination of the temple festival celebration, this is what happens. So Jesus is, is coming up, and, and imagine with me, just everybody's enjoying this festival, getting ready, preparing these lamps that are 75 feet, I believe, high. There's four of them. So in the evening, and the whole temple is just going to be glowing as they remember and recall how the Lord delivered them. And Jesus stands up and he says this. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I mean, that's, that's way more significant than just the, the statement out of its context. Now think about it. What is this? What was the pillar of fire? It was the manifest presence of God that led Israel through this time as they delivered him. So Jesus is, is declaring, I am the light of the world. Just as you're going to see the, these, these menorahs burning and remembering what happened in the desert, I am the light of the world that I am the one who delivers you out of Egypt. I am the one who leads you into the promised land. That even me saying I am the light of the world is, is putting me equal to the manifest presence of God that led Israel through the desert. Now, that is a huge, huge statement. 
so much more than just, oh, I don't want to walk in darkness. But this light is, is speaking to deliverance. This light is speaking into promise. This light is speaking into deity. This light is so much more than, than the comfort of not walking in dark places. Let's keep going. So what is this light of life? Now, the book of John talks a lot about light, and it talks a lot about life. <clears throat> so let's start in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And I think this begins to define these ideas that we just read in John chapter 8. So this is what it says in John chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Here we go, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So here we see John developing this idea, even Prior to him getting to this moment where Jesus makes a statement, John is, is, is defining what these things are, this life and this light of men and what, what all this is. That the darkness has not overcome it. That the light within us actually overcomes the darkness. That we see often that the darkness is our environment, but the light is our condition. You know, as we read that, <clears throat> it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of man. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That there's this, the light isn't something that's shining on us, but it's actually within us. And that's a much different situation because there's often a lot of dark times that we walked through, I think, 2020, there was, there was quite a bit of uh, confusion. There's quite a bit of uh, what seems to be darkness, um, at least directionally. Uh, and, 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 and we have to grab onto Jesus and go, what, what is this? I, there's this place in Jesus that I believe that we don't walk in that darkness anymore, that, that the things aren't hidden anymore, that we're not stumbling around in darkness, but, but there's light on our path and, and there's, there's clarity before us. You know, Jesus, in John 10.10, 10, if you've been here longer than five minutes, you've heard me talk about John 10.10. 10, we, uh, it it kind of has become one of our mottos. <clears throat> but John 10.10 10 says this. It says, The thief comes to only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. So Jesus, we see here again, this, this theme of life that he is bringing and he's bringing to give to men. And it's contrasted by the reality of, of the enemy who's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And that sounds a lot like darkness to me. It, but Jesus is, is not just the bringer, but he's the author as we see in, in John chapter one. But then we see that whosoever or whoever follows him in John 8 will have the light of life within him. Now, the light often life hands us some difficult moments. It uh, shakes up what we anticipated, what we expected. Um, and, and it feels like we're walking in darkness. It feels like there's a lot of confusion. And, and I, I remember a, a time in my life where, where it just seemed like everything was coming down on me. And, and, I, and I came across Gen, John 10.10 10 and, and it and it says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. 
you know, John 20, I believe it's 21. I'm kind of going off my notes here, but Jesus says, just as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. And when I read those two concepts kind of with each other in mind, our lives should be a reflection of this life abundantly because he brings it and he gives it to us, which transforms our hearts and our lives, in which we turn around and we go and we give that to others. And that, that's, that's the joy, the blessing of participating in this Christian life. But often <clears throat> we find ourselves at this place just in darkness. It almost feels like, Lord, I need some clarity. There's this, uh, I, I, it's just one of those moments where if we're just honest with ourselves, it's like, Lord, what's going on here? I'm, 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 I'm supposed to walk as this, right here in John 8, 12, it says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Like that is something that I think all of us kind of gets to a place and feels like I'm not there. I, I don't, my life almost feels like I'm more walking in darkness than in confusion and, and in question versus the light of life. That it doesn't say that you'll walk in the light of life. It says that you will have the light of life. And, and that's so different because it's your condition, as I said earlier, it's not your environment. That when you follow Jesus, your condition is this light of life. But as we read in Matthew chapter 10, verses 38 through 39, there's this place where, where Jesus talks about being worthy of him. And, um, and as, I, as I prepared and studied, you know, I, I just have to ask the question, have, have we, well, let me just read this and then we can talk about it. So Matthew 10, verses 38 through 39. It says, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, we see here there's this, it's very similar to what we read in, in John chapter 8 where there's this idea of following him, that we need to follow him. But, but here in Matthew, there's a new introduction of a concept of taking up his cross, taking up our cross in this journey. If we don't deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him, then we're not worthy of him. Now, I know some of us might go, what? Were you, I, you know, doesn't he cherish me? He says, but this, this, this statement is not speaking to our worth, but it's speaking to his worth. The cross speaks to our worth. This statement right here speaks to Jesus's worth. That if we're gonna follow him, if we're gonna walk in such a way that there's no darkness, then we must take up our cross and follow him, that we must prefer him above even ourselves, that if we want to gain our life, we must lose our life, that there's this reality of following Jesus that is elevating him above anything else in your life. That is your mother, your daughter, it's, it's everything. When you read that passage in Matthew in context of itself, Jesus is saying, I am the most high. You, if you don't, Take up your cross and follow me. If you don't deny yourself and follow me, you're not worthy of me. And those are hard words to hear, I think, especially in our culture, because we just want to be so accepting and make it so easy. But following Jesus, actually, there's a cost, there's a demand, there's a price. It's a free gift, but it does take effort to walk into what he has promised us. Jim Elliot, um, 
a famous missionary said it this way. He said, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And how true is that? A lot of times we uh, are just grabbing for the things that we won't even be able to keep in the end. We're grabbing for the things in our lives. This is if you want to find your life, you have to lose it. The things that, that we're losing are things that we're not going to be able to keep anyway. But if we really want to find life, if we want to find that abundant life that we see that Jesus is offering in, in John 10, 10, if we want that, then we have to actually lay ours down and we have to follow him. And that is significant. That our, our direction is not a destination, but our direction is a person. Our direction is tying ourselves to Jesus so just, just intimately that, that wherever he goes, we go. That it's not occupying a certain expression of ministry. That's not following Jesus. It's not, it's not any one thing that we can do. Those are all great things and those are all things that we need to be about. That goodness would flow out of our life within our cities. But to follow Jesus is not a, the destination is the person. That, that the measures are, 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 are actually in relationship and intimacy, not in check boxes and lists. So I want to challenge us today first of all if we if we find ourselves feeling like we're walking in darkness in this time especially that, that this whole reality of um, the light of life that, 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 that just seems foreign to us that just seems foreign to you right now. If you, when you read John 8, if you're like, man, you know, if I'm following Jesus, I'm not walking in darkness, but I have the light of life. If that just is like, that's just not my reality. That's not, it's like, I believe in Jesus and, 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 I, and I go to church and I do these things, but that's not my reality. I would, I would actually challenge you today with Matthew 10 verse. It's like, are there things in your life that you have not lost to gain? Are there things in your life that you're holding on to that you haven't given to Jesus? Because he says it very clearly. He says, if you don't take up your cross and follow me, if you don't die to yourself, then you're not worthy of me. Those are harsh statements, but those are the conditions in which he calls us to be his disciples. And today, I just want to challenge us to examine that in our lives. I love when you read uh, Exodus and you read how Yahweh or how God delivered his people. He, he was never concerned about um, defaming the other gods in the sense of saying that they don't exist. That, that wasn't... That wasn't what he was trying to do. He wasn't saying, oh, those aren't even real gods. You know, in Bible college, I had a professor say, they don't even talk about that until the book of Isaiah. God doesn't even say that they're not gods until the book of Isaiah when he's sitting here. He says, out of a piece of wood, you, you cut it in half and start a fire. With the other half, you carve an image that has eyes that don't see and ears that don't hear and you bow down and worship it. He says, that's not a god at all. But here, G, or here God as he delivers his people out of, out of Israel, out of Egypt, excuse me, the thing that he was concerned with is that he was the most high God, that he was superior and he had all supremacy over anything and everything. And that was the point that he was making. So as the pillar of fire came down, what was leading them was the most high God, the God that no other gods can, can even compare to. And this is who they follow through the desert. This is what they were remembering as the menorahs that were 75 feet high were burning as the illumination of the temple ceremony was happening. This was all the things that were happening as Jesus declares, I am the light of the world. I will be the one who will deliver you. I will be the one who's going to lead you into promise. I will be that for you. But it begins by acknowledging that he is the most high God. So the question is, is he the most high in your life? 
The only way to follow Jesus is to make him the most high. It's, it's, it's just a game if you do something else. If you don't take up your cross and follow him, you're not worthy of him. And it's just a charade. And that's not what we're about. Because there's so much life in Jesus. There's abundant life as we read in John 10.10. 10. So today, Brian Hall is going to lead us in one final song. And I just want all of us to stop and reflect. And I just want us to elevate Christ. I want us to examine our heart and ask God, say, Lord, is there anything as we start this new year that is offensive to you in my life? Is there anything that actually has more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More, more authority that I've given more weight in my life and I'm out of balance. Lord, I want to lay that down today. And as we sing today, I want all of us to have a moment with Jesus and do some business and lay down as we begin this series, as we begin this year of following Jesus. This is gonna be a, a, a year of, of taking up our cross and following him and denying ourselves and losing what we can't keep to gain what can't be taken from us. So let's welcome Ryan Hall as he leads us in worship. God bless. Thank you, Ryan Hall, for leading us in worship. I want to just say, love you guys. 
I hope you have a blessed Sunday. We'll, we'll post as soon as we can as when we know what we're doing for the following weeks. You have a great day with your family. Hope to see you soon. Take care.